Hello together. My name is Armin Klaus. And I'm Thomas Baudisch. And we want to talk today a little bit uh, about how we are working together in these times. Uh, the people out, even not being nerds, are utilizing all kinds of assistance, Alexa, Siri, and more. And we give you today an insight of what's already possible at an industry level. First, a little insight about our new Siemens organization. Thomas here is working to the technology group, providing innovation services out of our R&D center, center. And I myself belong to the industry software within the digital industries group working for the automotive industry. We are executing lots of projects based on various customer demands. The current focus is mainly on data analytics, simulation, and how to support automatisms generating the digital twin. The interplay of all disciplines along the value chain is important to understand information within the context of dedicated processes. Without such contextualization, no transformation or implicit knowledge can be captured, nor will insights be generated um, without the manual uh, allocation. Looking at, looking at the challenges of complex information, there is always a history of heterogeneous data sources, redundant data in diverse formats without true standardization. No one knows that better than Siemens, as we are also a manufacturer and went through a digital transformation so far. The idea of having a digital twin where no physics is existing is now present at all levels. Um, this is in the beginning uh, of the engineering phase. Watching the synchronization with the digital shadow when physics is running and producing data, everyone knows an alignment with planning is done mainly manually. A data lake alone makes no knowledge. A cloud infrastructure does not deliver a data correlation according to process demand. So we have to see how to deal with this huge complexity. We need some technology in order to create the basics for digital assistance. See here a use case where someone wants to change a production schedule. No Alexa or Siri can do this today, but we started to take knowledge graphs, machine learning and voice bots already, building solutions that are able to synchronize data structures, semantics, and more to gain automated answers. Semantic Machine Assistant, SAM, is an example that you can use today, and maybe in the future, Semanta will be the companion's name as the solution of choice. Companion-generated answers will enable verification by automated information correlation. What are some of the building blocks we need to control? It's all about the interplay of what you see here in the picture. No single element or step will be the answer. Only collaboration of the entire captured knowledge and technology adoption is key to gain such acceleration of process. In the following, we show you our next generation operator assist systems works using a concrete example from the process industry. And here I hand over to Thomas uh, to show you some more of the details. Thank you, Armin. So therefore, we have provided an activity diagram where we sketched a simplified workflow of how the operator assist system processes a user question. Vertically left, you see the different elements of the system, the user, the chatbot, the knowledge system, and so on. Horizontally above, you can see examples of the data that is passed between the process steps in the activity diagram below. In this case, the operator assist system should answer the question whether an unplanned rush order can be accepted without disturbing the delivery dates of the running production. The interface between the human and the technical system is a chatbot in our case. And now I go through the slim swim lanes. I start above left with the user question. The chatbot interprets the question by cutting it into single pieces. 
based on this query interpretation, the user question needs to be matched with existing simulation and optimization services or existing data structure. Therefore, in the next step, the knowledge system is queried to provide a description of the existing simulation or model-based services provided by the system. These existing services can then be matched with the user query so that the actual services can be triggered. Here, we separate between three types of services providing the information in order to answer the user question. These are depicted in parallel in the bottom part of the activity, activity diagram. Let's start with the middle one, uh, the execute internal graph query. This is a simple query for a database, e.g. a Sparkle query that returns an answer based on the data that is stored in the internal graph database. The lowest swim lane section also queries data only. However, here external data sources such as ERP or MES systems can be attached in the query. This works by linking those external data sources via so-called query federation mechanisms to the internal graph database. The simulation track is executed if a simulation or other calculation task needs to be performed. Therefore, simulation runs are queried via standard HTTP request. The simulation is then automatically parameterized with the given query parameters and executed. Partially, the required simulation models can also be generated or adapted. This could be the case if a change in the layout of the factory needs to be considered and the structure of the simulation model must be modified. All of these individual results are then forwarded to the chatbot backend where they are merged into a single response for the user. In the following, we take a closer look to the following three topics, chatbots, knowledge representation and model generation. But let's continue with the chatbot. The task of the chatbot is to translate the question of the user, D on the left, into a query for either a knowledge graph or a simulation model depicted on the right. For this, three major steps are needed. First, the intent has to be extracted from the question in the words of the user. In our example, can I accept the rush order? has to be translated as such that a forecast simulation can be performed. The second step is to extract the relevant entities and parameters from this query. In this case, it would be relevant that a rush order needs to be considered in the forecast simulation, hence giving it a certain priority compared to other orders. Last but not least, missing parameters have to be queried from the user so that the simulation model can be further parameterized. In our example, it could be relevant to know from the user what KPIs would be relevant, such as the lead time, the OEE, or the cost. This is, of course, even more relevant in optimization scenarios. To set up our demonstrator, we used the, the open source framework rather, which worked quite well for our purpose. But now let's have a closer look to the knowledge, knowledge representation. And for that, I hand over to Armin. Thank you. The knowledge representation is based on different archetypes, such as production hierarchies, processes, functional elements, and more. This must be brought into relation to operational use cases where process owners can automatically detect contextual dependence. Siemens provides a wide industrial knowledge, 
where automatisms of correlation can be realized. Where classical databases will hardly identify implicit and complex information, knowledge graphs make such hidden interdependencies visible. The Industrial Ontology Library is the core asset enabling digital transformation and semantic contextualization being able to map multiple standards to individual company benefits. For such an endeavor, Siemens is, uh, not only has the experience as a manufacturer, but also can rely on deep research funds. The adoption of the entire end-to-end -end use case lifecycle is practically proven with the accelerated portfolio and tested at various customer engagements. Okay, and now let's come to the last module, the model generation. This is the most important one if you want to save time for information retrieval with assist system. Of course, this is a very large field where you can work for years and so you have to focus what we did. So, imagine you have a description of your factory or process plant in a domain graph model. The domain graph model here has nothing to do with the simulation. It describes the structure of the real plant. E.g. tank A with volume 200 liters is connected by a pipe with diameter 150 millimeters with tank B. And what if we can integrate in such knowledge graph also the simulation model itself only represented as a graph model? With the query language Sparkle, you can directly insert new graph structures into existing graph databases, and thus also simulation graph models can be created. In my example, this means we select appropriate simulation modules from a library and instantiate them in the simulation graph. It gives us several benefits because we can directly operate on the graph. For example, graph-related techniques such as pattern matching or graph traversal come in, come in quite handy when you transform from one model to another. The main benefit, however, that I see is that you can draw links between the simulation graph model and the domain graph model and thus capture the dependencies between these so to say you formalize the simulation expert knowledge. An additional benefit is that you could use these relations as training data for machine learning approaches later on. However, this requires a large data set and many simulation examples to be feasible, of course. Now it is rather easy to generate executable simulation models from the graph models by scripting languages. In our case, we used Python for that. And now I show you a movie of what we have achieved so far. The demonstrator, uh, the story of our demonstrator is for a fair, a special limonade is produced, which is getting a topping. To do so, an additional station should be added to the existing line. For the modified line, the operator wants to know the capacity, the utilization and the throughput rate. On the right side, you see the technomatics plant simulation model. On top of the plant simulation model, you see tanks and pipes, and at the bottom, the filling line. And now we start the chatbot by typing add topping between labeling and line 11. For proof reasons, the chatbot says what the system, system has identified. Here, I have got the changes as, as follows, at topping one between labeling and line 11. So the adding of the station was successfully identified, as you also can see in the simulation model. Now in our demonstrator, the user starts the default standard simulation by typing start. And by typing start, uh, the simulation starts running. If finished, the chatbot automatically returns the capacity utilization 
and so throughput rate. Yeah, and now let's come um, to our summary. Yeah, all that can apply in all kinds of scenarios you can imagine. We, have already, we are already working in various use cases for the automotive industry. We have recognized the huge saving potential with regards to automatic generation of simulation models, but also bringing the data in the right context. So the key question is, as you can see here, do you still create data lake or are you working with companions already? We invite you here to work with us and hope you we, we see each other in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you and see All you. Bye-bye. Right.